been with this intervention since 2007 when we started at Makerere as an extracurricular activity, plugging into a wider network of over 31 universities led by MIT to explore transportation solutions targeting the Indian market at a time. Till today when we have a government program for industrialization uh, under the Presidential Initiative for Science and Technology Innovation to explore the possibility of establishing sustainable opportunities for manufacturing vehicles in Uganda. We resolved that it was not enough for us to go to classrooms with these wonderful students, deliver them the lecture notes, the formulas, and stop there. We wanted to start realizing uh, some of those formulas in actual product forms. Well, one of, the, one of the things that was interesting for the students is they had gone through MIT, they had gone to a global uh, electric vehicle design, uh, I wouldn't call it a competition, but an event in Turin, uh, in Italy. And they knew how to make a car, but there were some subsystems that needed to talk to each other through a central brain. Uh, and it just so happens that some of the technology that we were using for the internet delivered labs could be double used, some of National Instruments technology, could be double used to become the vehicle controller. And so I gave them some ideas about how I thought a vehicle controller might be designed with our tools and the students grabbed that and within a year and a half they had, I got an email in my inbox that said, hey we've made a car, do you know anybody in the auto industry that can help us to, to make buses and vehicles uh, and cars uh, in Uganda? Alongside we wanted to address the uh, issue of uh, public transportation, more so in cities, and we already realized that here we have the sun running maximum, you know, at least eight hours of intense sun a day throughout the year. So we said, why don't we derive the energy to use to complement what an electric car bus would do? And it is the incorporation of that, those two sources of energy, if you like, together with the battery, that we put on this bus, which is moving this. Kira Motors is about uh, the establishment of vehicle manufacturing capabilities right here in Uganda. Currently in Uganda we import over 50,000 used vehicles. This is not only compromising the capacity of our people to use their productivity, but also it comes with a challenge of uh, uh, dumping obsolete technology as well as uh, emissions that are not meeting uh, uh, set and agreed uh, emission standards within the UN Economic Commission. As Kira Motors would like to change that entire phase and we're saying there is a need for the vehicles, there is a need and there is also an, an opportunity for us to develop homegrown vehicle technology. We believe in technology that offers the end user opportunities not only in terms of functionality, moving people and their goods, but also opportunities to uh, access in cleaner environment. We have so far worked on uh, three concept vehicles. The Kira EV, which was um, unveiled in 2011, uh, the Kira EV Smart, which was unveiled in 2014, and the Ultimate Kayola Solabas, which was unveiled at the Kampala Serena on the 16th of February 2016. Um, I'm here to congratulate you on this great achievement of making not only a car in Uganda, but a solar one.
at the time the innovators and promoters of uh, the Kira EV came to us, we were grappling with uh, what are the areas as Uganda Development Corporation we need to go into. But when this idea of making vehicles, and not only making vehicles that everybody else makes, making vehicles that are powered by, the solar, by solar energy, this was an exciting moment. So we jumped onto this, we all agreed that this was something that was worth looking at, and I can assure you, we have been borne out by that enthusiasm. I have worked on the on different projects for Kira Motors Corporation, including the Kayola Solar Bus, and I designed the interior of the bus. As you can see, it's very beautiful and very comfortable. And it was a, an interesting project because, as with my background in architecture, it was my first time to work on automotive products. Uh, we had to look into what kind of materials are we going to use. We have developed a five-year uh, plan to, for the Kira, Kira Motors Corporation. Between 2015 and 2018, those are the five years, we are hoping to be getting in the region of 50, 000, 50 million US dollars every year over that period. So if that money is given by 2018, we should be able to, to produce uh, vehicles in this country. Government has so willingly given us land in Jinja, 100 acres of prime land where we hope to establish a manufacturing plant for the Kira Motors Corporation. I'm really excited because very soon, that is in 2018, these vehicles that we have been making, they've been prototypes, but the public will actually be able to use them, drive them, they'll be able to experience what we have been experiencing in our designs. Kira Motors would like to give you competent cars, products that you will be proud of, a product that you'll be able to recommend to your friends, to your in-laws, to your outlaws. We will be able to uh, provide you with financing uh, schemes whereby uh, you can come and we talk. If you can avail about uh, a, a certain percentage uh, at the start, then we work out terms with the financial institutions on how you can um, be able to handle the rest of your bill depending upon your situation. I believe that the future of the world is in Africa and that's the beginning of making that future. I believe that this is going to inspire very many young people, including current and future students, that their education, engineering education, is not just about getting a piece of paper and going to look for a job, but that they can actually use their ingenuity to create products that will serve society, products that will bring income to their families, and that will contribute to the socio-economic development of Uganda and Africa. I think that this type of project is very important because it allows people to reach just beyond where they have been. So we're not putting something that is an impossible task uh, in front of these engineers. What we're doing is giving them engineering problems to solve that can be solved but that stretch their abilities. Another thing that's important about this project is that there hasn't been a, a vehicle like this with the technology like this in this year, uh, in, in this time and place that's been developed by Africans for Africans. And that's a, an, an important thing to understand. When you're importing technology from somewhere else, it's been made by people who may not have the same experiences that you've had. And to have local engineers add value to a vehicle like this uh, is an important step. This, I do believe, is going to not only enable us to have uh, an improved environmental outlook, but it's also going to support uh, better utilization of the scarce foreign exchange that we have in the country today by putting it back in the people who are actually making this money and enabling them to have opportunities for living a life of choice here in the East African community.
the way to go is to ensure that as we engineer uh, technology that is supposed to address the needs of people, especially in the transportation space. We should have technology which ensures that while today's mankind satisfies their need, it does not adversely compromise the capacity of mankind in the generations to come to also satisfy the same need through excessive emissions that are leading to concepts that are widely discussed today, uh, such as global warming, to mention but a few.